to the world. Subscribe now to the Hot 97 YouTube channel. It's Ebro in the Morning with Laura Stiles and Rosenberg. A lot was made, and I, I believe rightfully so, over Kyrie's uh, tweet of a link to a, an anti-Semitic, uh, what would you call it, a film, documentary? Documentary, oh, sure. Documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot was made of Kanye West's nothing, nothing, nothing to worry about. commentary on Jewish folks, Jews, anti-Semitism, and rightfully so. And here we are today, a few days removed from uh, Jerry Jones' photo from 1950-whatever, uh, as he stood nearby a mob of students as they integrated a school in Arkansas. And LeBron James has something to say. I was wondering why I haven't gotten a question from you guys about the Jerry Jones photo. But when the Kyrie thing was going on, you guys were quick to ask us questions about that. Okay. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I don't even want you guys to say nothing. When I watched Kyrie talk and he says, I know who I am, but I want to keep the same energy when we're talking about my people and the things that we've been through. And that Jerry Jones photo is one of those moments that our people, black people, have been through in America. And I feel like as a black man, as a black athlete, as someone with power and a platform, when we do something wrong or, or something that people don't agree with, it's on every single tabloid, every single news coverage, it's on the bottom ticker, it's asked about every single day. But it seems like to me that the whole Jerry Jones situation photo, and I know it was years and years ago and we all make mistakes, I get it. But it seemed like it's just been buried under like, oh, it happened, okay, we just, we just move on. And I was just kind of disappointed that I haven't received that question from you guys. Appreciate it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, LeBron. That's right. That's right. Yeah, LeBron right. basically hit that whole room with this. Congratulations, yep. you played yourself. We see you. And what? And, and what? And what do you? What do you mean, Ebro? You see them? Well, what I see, and what I feel, yeah, not, not, is worry. that there's a there's much to do about the uh, disrespect of other cultures often, and rightfully so. But our society in America frequently displays a comfortability with the disrespect of black folks and the memories of the disrespect of black folks. We are comfortable with it. So yes, it does fly by. Now, when something egregious and crazy takes place, like a George Floyd, yes. Ahmaud Arbery, yes. Of course, the world is up in arms. We're watching somebody die on camera. Right, right, right. Right? But what about these, these smaller moments that all add up to the larger moments of the George Floyd and the Ahmaud Arbery? Mm -hmm. These microaggressions that take place against black folks all the time, in the workplace, on the street, from cops, from the way people look at you, from the way immigrants come to this country and even look and talk about black folks, from the way we see black folks get treated, whether you're a Haitian immigrant or migrant looking for refuge and they send you back. But if you're someone from another lighter complected nation and you come to America, it's all good. That's right. That's right. Or even, you know, being concerned about ICE picking you up. Europeans ain't concerned about their visa, bro. Yep. That's black and brown people walking around all the time worried that somebody's going to ask them for their green card, their ID, and where they're from. Y'all not asking Europeans that. Those type of things just fly by. It's nothing. It's nothing. Even when you're talking about what's going on in Ukraine, terrible. But nobody's talking about America supporting Rwanda. Right. And Rwanda destabilizing the Congo. And those are millions of African people dying right now. Black in Yemen. Millions of black people are dying. Not even a news, not even a headline. And I get why, because the they's that control the media are generally white.
And so they don't see themselves in the struggle. But I'm so proud of LeBron James for that. When he hit the whole room and everybody's sitting around like, yeah, that Jerry Jones thing kind of did. <laughs> Go nowhere. And it is interesting. He never had a hired a black head coach before. But can I, I have to say one thing. I'm sorry. I, I love that LeBron said it. I think he tapped into exactly what one of the biggest issues has been over the last month is the lack of consistency in terms of how these stories are covered. But this story came from the media. The whole Jerry Jones thing was an article. That's where it came well, I don't, from. I it wasn't like he spoke. But that remember, LeBron's, LeBron's talking to that room. He's not talking to all media. He's right. He's saying to his, to that his, Lake, room. his Laker people who talk to him every day. That room. You know what I'm about. And you know I was and a Cowboys fan. I was a Cowboys fan. He was. He renounced the Cowboys. But he was a Cowboys fan. Yes. That so that's, that's the button. It was for the room. It wasn't right. for media in general. Yourself. Right, right, right. Or what you got today? So uh, when this story came out, Pete had called it out, but it seems, uh, and he was right. Canelo Alvarez gave himself the button. Oh, hit it. Congratulations. So, uh, you played yourself. So I don't know if you guys remember, but, you know, um, he had made threats because he, he said to, uh, he said, he better pray to God that I don't find him. Just like I respect Argentina, he has to respect Mexico. Mm-hmm. Well, there was a video that was uh, floating around. Was it? It was in the locker room, I believe, where That's people right. thought that Lionel Messi was kicking or standing on a Mexican jersey in the dressing room. But when we looked at it, we were like, eh, it, looks, it, it didn't seem like it was on purpose. Or, you know what I mean? Or maybe he was just, you know, people had uh, taken off clothes on. The, it just didn't seem like that was his, you know, like, MO, right? So... <laughs> Later on, Canelo decides to go on Twitter and said, well, the last few days I got carried away by passion and the love I feel for my country and made comments that were out of place, for which I want to apologize to Messi and the people of Argentina. Every day we learn something new, and this time it was my turn. Mm. In other words, congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> and and, I'll, and mine is a continuation of that, Ebro. Because and and by the way, I know DJ John's going to get mad at me and think that oh, I, I was rooting against him. I was not. I was rooting absolutely him or Mexico. I was absolutely rooting for Mexico yesterday. They needed to have a certain vict- uh, victory margin over Saudi Arabia to be able to advance past Poland. Didn't happen. Instead, they actually gave up a goal to Saudi Damn. Arabia in extra Damn. time. Damn, in extra, in, in stoppage time. But the thing, the reason they gave up that goal is because they were still pressing for, they needed one more goal. So Mexico was so busy pressing to get their goal, naturally, that they gave up the dumbest goal in extra time. And it's over. Instead, Poland and Argentina move on, and Mexico goes home. But you got to you if you if the whole thing's on the line, and you're a team with the history, the proud soccer history of Mexico, you got to crush Saudi Arabia. So for that, I'm sorry, but congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> 